Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Our High Calling. I am your host, Brett Denman, and I pray that all of you have had a blessed week. Uh, for those of you who are new to the podcast, uh, this is a show uh, for those who are looking to understand the high calling that God has for them in their life. And I am uh, not a professional uh I'm not a pastor or anything like that. I'm just a lay person who wants to uh, help to explore the Word of God with you and and to apply practical Christian principles to our everyday life. Uh, if you're interested in my testimony, there is a, a book that I wrote, a very short book, uh, available on Amazon.com. It's called Soul About Noon. And it just uh, touches a little bit on uh, my experience living in South Korea for 11 years, uh, where I was uh, converted and was baptized and spent um, many years there. And uh, so the book uh, delves into my conversion and some of the experiences I had there. And also, um, week to week, uh, I often share stories um, from Korea, uh, things that happened to me that are. Uh, pertinent to the information uh, that I'd like to share with you. Um, But today, uh, I would like to ask you a question. Is your conscience, you know, that inner voice which speaks to you, a guide that is safe to follow? Um, You know, what, what of the man who feels that what is right and what is wrong can be determined by how his inner self feels about it? Um, one of the stories I'd like to share from Korea is, uh, you know, I was driving on the highway and I wasn't quite sure of the directions and didn't, and I didn't want to ask for help. Uh, this was before I, I got a GPS. Um, but I saw this exit and I thought to myself, you know, this, this is my, this is probably my exit. Um, and as I got off the exit and, um, onto the road, the exit only you could only go one way. So as you got off the exit and you turned in the direction that uh, you could only go, it, it came to a gate. And um, as I pulled up to the gate, I was met by several men carrying rifles. And what I had done is I had got off on an exit that was for an army base. And uh, the Korean soldiers, you know, they spoke some English. They got me turned around and and in the right direction. And it was a kind of a scary situation pulling up, having all these rifles pointed at you. But, you know, it was my pride that had prevented me from asking for directions. And, you know, so again, I ask, is, is your conscience a safe guide? You know, as we listen to God's word, we, we find the answer. You know, in Proverbs 16.25, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, um, the situation I find myself on the highway, you know, was it a life or death situation? You know, probably not. You know, I don't think those Korean soldiers were going to shoot me because I got off on the wrong exit. But there are decisions that we do make in our life that have eternal consequences. There, there are salvation issues that, that we need to make sure that we are making the right choice. And, you know, for us, we, we need guidance. We need help. As Christians, we need to be led and guided by God. I, let's go to the, uh, the book of Isaiah. And, you know, for me, it's crystal clear that I cannot depend on conscience alone. And, you know, and in view of this fact, God has a special message for us. So let's look in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. And if we go to Isaiah 55, verse 6, in part it says, you know, Seek the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. You know, apparently there is coming a time when it will be too late, and he will not be found. You know, it continues, uh, verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way. You know, he continues, The unrighteous man his thoughts, 
and let him return unto the Lord, uh, for he will abundantly pardon. That's verse 7. And here and only here uh, will we really find the right way. You know, we have to uh, return unto the Lord. If you've never, if you don't know the Lord, seek the Lord. Like I did, you know, with, with my testimony, you know, I, I, I didn't know how to pray. I, I knew that I wanted to discover, you know, God. And all I did, this, the first time I got a Bible study is I just prayed, you know, a very simple prayer. You know, God, if you're real, uh, show yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. And, and then I went into the Bible. And what I did is I invited the Holy Spirit to lead and direct me as I opened up the Bible. And God is revealed in the pages of the Bible. God's will is reveal, revealed in the pages of the Bible. So he continues, uh, verses 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Your thoughts. Um, wow, that's that's pretty incredible. You know, the hardest man in the world for God to reach is not the hardened sinner, but it's the man who feels that he is just as good as the next guy. He measures himself by his neighbor. He compares himself with the other men and in, in self-righteousness decides that there is nothing more that he needs. You know, such self-deception is the most dangerous, for it blinds us to our true condition. And it is only as, as we compare ourselves to, to the perfect Christ that our own needs become apparent. You know, let us never forget that Jesus is our pattern. You know, it is the master alone that we are to measure ourselves by, and only then will our need of change become crystal clear to us. You know, and how true it is that, you know, that we need to, to follow this pattern. Because left on our own, you know, we'll just do naughty. And that's just the reality of it. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, without the direction of God and His Word, the, the you know, the worldly man will, will go off and, and do bad things. It says, let's go, let's go to the book of Haggai. And I, I'm trying to squeeze in as many Bible verses as possible because, you know, first of all, even though this is a, a podcast and it's for me to talk, it, I, I want it to be a, a Bible study. Let's, let's open up the Word. Let's study and, and read what it says. In Haggai 1 verse 5, it says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So he has told us that our ways are wildly different from his ways. And, and just how different they are will become apparent as we go on with this study. Uh, let's go to uh, 1 John 2. 1 John 2.15. The Lord says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So the way of the world, right, the natural inclination of the heart is to compromise, you know, to go with the crowd and, and to drift along through life. And I can attest that that's how I was, you know, as a 31-year-old when I went to Korea before I came to the Lord. And that's not God's purpose for us. Like the, the title of this podcast our high calling. God has a high calling for each of us. He has a plan and a purpose for our life and how, and how it fits in his kingdom and how, how you fit in, in sharing the good news with the world. So, you know, there, there's, a, there's a vital reason why we must not place our affection on the things of the world. And God continues he, in, in verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 
So it is obedience that counts with God. And it, it is only the obedient who will abide forever. So it's those of us who have decided that we are going to dedicate our lives to Christ and do it enthusiastically. And when you do that, then you're going to continue to grow because the, the more we grow as, as Christians, the closer we get to Christ. And that's what we really want, that close connection. Because the closer we get to Jesus, the closer we are to God the Father. So, you know, these verbal professions of loyalty to God are not enough. And in fact, they mean nothing unless they are backed up with obedience to Him. You know, I've heard many say, I'm saved or I accepted Christ. And if they had not told you, you would have never known it. You know, that's the problem I had in, when I was at the Lutheran College in Portland, Concordia University. There were lots of Lutherans on that campus, but they looked just like me and my other secular friends who were just doing worldly things. Let's go to the book of Romans. Let's go to Romans 6, verse 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So far too many who claim to follow uh, Jesus are disobedient to him. And it is not the one who claims him as master that is going to be saved. You know, in Matthew uh, 7.21, in part it says, But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, a miracle performed in the name of Jesus, unless accompanied by obedience, is a work of iniquity, for it leads to deception. So, everything that, that, that is done, it has to be done uh, following the will of God. So, if, if Jesus in one part of the Bible says, hey, don't do that, but somebody says, in the name of Jesus, I'm doing the opposite of what he says, they're not doing it in the name of Jesus. I mean, they may be saying it, but that's not where the power is coming from. See, the Satan loves hypocritical Christians. And, you know, he's trying to deceive Christians because we don't, let's be honest, we don't really know our Bibles. We don't really know what the Bible says about everything. Now, whose fault is that? Well, that's our own fault because nothing's stopping us from studying the Word of God and but ourselves, you know. So what, what are we giving our affections to? Are we being led away by affections of the world, cares of the world, entertainment, things like that? So we need to make sure that everything that is done in the name of Jesus aligns with what the Bible says, you know. So we must all, as we study the Bible, we must be ready when truth is brought to us. And then, and then we need to examine it. And when we find out that it is truth, we need to follow it. You know, God promised to, to cleanse us from unrighteousness. You know, God will not condone sin in any way, shape, or form. You know, and, and it is here that the nominal Christian loses the point of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation, not merely to whitewash the old life. It must be a new experience in Christ Jesus with a complete change in action. So, therefore, we, we all need to make a careful study of the revealed will of God, which is only found in the Word of God. So we must learn that His high standards are for us, that we might follow them. And we can't forget that, that Jesus did not... Um, just come to save sinners, okay? He came to make saints out of them and then save them. You know, if you go to Hebrews 5 verse 9, in part it says, He became the author of eternal salvation only unto all them that obey Him. So, and I'll, let me read the, that was just in part, let me read the entire verse, Hebrews 5 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them who obey him. So, 
Jesus is our perfect example. And he's the author and finisher of our faith, right? And he's the one that it is going to lead and direct our path. But only the people that obey him. So remember, it's not our will, not our way, not our ideas, but what God has for us, what the way of Jesus. You know, um, he will never save the willful disobedient. Right? That's why I say if he didn't he didn't come to save sinners. He's not going to save people that are in open sin. He's going to save those who who were sinners because remember while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. That he's going to save us, but then he's going to change us. We're not going to stay sinners. You know, when I became a Christian, Jesus helped me overcome many bad habits. And you know, as as adults, you know what these bad habits are, these things that we put into our body. So he helped me overcome that. He wasn't going to save me, you know, in my sin or I can continue to sin. He was going to save me from it. So he will never save the willful disobedient. Therefore, to know his will, his will is prime importance in our life. You know, and, and there are three sources that I want to share with you where his standards are clearly shown. So let's take a look at them. Now, there's, there's more than three, but for time consideration, I'm only going to do three. So the first one is the pattern of Christ. You know, his life is a safe pattern to follow. You know, we, we can with confidence walk as he walked, right? He shows us how to keep the Sabbath to the glory of God. His ministration to others, right? And interest in them should be our attitude to others. His patience, his kindness is an example to us, right? 1 John verse 2, 6. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he is walked. So we have to uh, look at the pattern of Christ and, and do what he did. Okay, the second one is the divine law of God, okay? Here is God's great mirror that reflects his perfect character, right? The psalmist says, the law of the Lord is perfect, right? Uh, Psalm 19, 7. And, and Paul says in Romans 7, 7, I had not known sin, but by the law. You know, it defines what sin is for us. And the violation of any of its precepts is sin. Right? You can read about that yourself in, in James 2.10. So, to ignore any one of its precepts is to ignore uh, light and truth. And the third one is the Holy Word of God. All right, Within the confines of the Bible is to be found a powerhouse of resources. Right, In the Word of God. We need to be the people of the book. Now, I'm not saying that there's not other resources that you can, you know, that you can read that will help you along. Um, you know, there's authors out there who, who have had uh, Christian experiences that they share. So that's great. You can read them, read testimonies, you know, but it's when people start to share their ideas that just aren't biblical. That, that lead you away to strange doctrines. You know, the, the Bible is really all, all we need. You know, there's power to completely change your life if you let it found in the pages of the Bible. Uh, let's read uh, 1 Peter one twenty three. In 1 Peter one twenty three, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. A study of these sources will reveal his will for us. So just to repeat, the pattern of Christ, the divine law of God, and the holy word of God. If we focus on those three things, then, then not only will we have uh, a, a pattern to follow in Jesus, and then we have a standard as to what is sin, 
And then we have the word of God, which is the light unto the world that we, it's the bread, right? Man shall not live on bread alone, but, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. We must eat the Bible. man. We have to internalize it. And then it becomes part of us, right? Because we need to be, have the word of God in our heart and, and between the ears. That's important too. So one cannot walk with Jesus without having his life changed. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. But you have to give your whole heart to the conversion. And I shared with in my book, um, Soul About Noon, that when I was at Concordia, which was this Lutheran college in Portland, I took many Bible classes and I had to study the Bible. But I, I only took it uh, to get a passing grade. You know, I, I gave a half-hearted approach to studying it. Thus, the Holy, power, Holy Spirit power wasn't working in me. But if, if you give your whole heart to it and allow the Bible um, to penetrate your heart and your mind, then you will be changed, right? And he, he takes us from this lower, you know, our own way to the upper, his way, and, and puts us on a road to eternal life and happiness. Maybe not on this earth, but listen, when God uh, takes you to heaven, and then when he recreates this earth new, right? A new earth and a new heaven I will give you. Man, it, it, it'll, it'll be beyond our comprehension, right? But it's, it's the proud heart that gets in the way of this change, that gets in the way of the Holy Spirit working on us. You know, within the Bible, we will find the principles we need to walk by. And God gives us uh, the intelligence to apply those principles. You know, you have to ask yourself um, how your practice fits with this statement. Uh, you know, think about your life and, and let's read 1 Corinthians 10.31. And I use this verse a lot in my book because, you know, it's a powerful verse. It says, uh, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You know, we're supposed to apply whatever we do to the glory of God. So we have to look at ourselves and, and, and think, is what I'm watching to the glory of God? Is what I'm listening to to the glory of God? What about what I'm putting on? What clothes am I wearing? Am I wearing it to the glory of God? Right? You know, it doesn't say thou shall not smoke, but they did not acquire, you know, the Bible's not going to point out every single little sin, right? But we understand that can you smoke to the glory of God? No. How are you going to destroy your body to the glory of God? That's not what he wants. He wants us to preserve our body, right? He calls it a temple. So we have to remember that verse, right? What, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God, right? So let's not forget that text, you know. We, we need to use it to measure, to weigh, to check everything you allow to pass into your mind. You know, and in part, what does Philippians 4 verse 8 tell us? In part, it says, whatsoever things, you know, are honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So does God want our minds to be pure? Absolutely. See, what we're trying to do here on earth with the life that we've been given is to change our character, to be like Christ. So, do you believe that when Christ walked this planet, that what was in his mind was pure and good and, and of a good report? I do. You know, you know, this is the yardstick. This is the measuring stick. For the books we read, the music we hear, you know, the recreation we follow, the places we go, uh, TV programs we watch, radio programs, you know, ask yourself, is it true? Is it good? You know, are we following a bunch of rubbish? You know, we, we have to be careful about what we're, we're putting into our bodies, right? Because 
ultimately, there's going to come a day when judgment comes, right? And if we read in the Bible, there's a certain group of people that are saved and a certain group of people are lost. And we don't want to be found in that group that is lost, right? And, you know, the Bible, like if we read uh, in Revelation, let's go to Revelation 22. And it talks about the people that are going to be outside the holy city. If you go to Revelation 22, verse 15, and people outside the holy city are the ones that are lost. It says, um, for without, you know, those that are outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Because God is only going to accept into his kingdom the true and the lovely. You know, and I, I don't usually share Bible verses that aren't the King James Version. Uh, but listen to listen to what the Amplified Bible Version says in Revelation 22.15. It says, Outside are the dogs, the godless, the impure, those of low moral character, and the sorcerers with their intoxicating drugs and magic arts, and the immoral persons, the perverted, the molesters and the adulterers, and the murderers and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying, deception, cheating. <laughs> so, as Christians, do we, re we really don't want to be associated with that lot, do we? No, we don't want our names attached to anything. So we have to look in the mirror, and we really have to do some self-evaluating. Is there anything that I'm doing that is not in line with what God wants for us? Right? So, you know, like I said, God's plan is not to whitewash our sins, not to cover them with a cloak of righteousness, but to completely change us, right? To change our actions, our words, our likes and dislikes. And, you know, he even, he even changes the way you dress. He changes the words that come out of your Everything about you changes. Because when you give your life totally over to Christ, then you're giving everything over to him. Right? And, you know, even, you know, I, we, we talk about, you know, as Christians, that we are followers of Christ. And, and what Christ does to us, and this is one of the very first steps to coming to Christ, is humility. You know, we need to humble ourselves. When people meet us, they need to know that we are Christians, and we need to share the good news. We're not here to promote ourselves. I'm not out there on the street promoting Brett Denman. I'm out there promoting the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that God uh, sent his son to die for you and that you have hope. I'm not out there for, for myself. And so we need, we need to remember, just like, you know, our text said in the very beginning, I talked about Isaiah 55 verse 9, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, when we give our thoughts and our life over to Jesus, he lifts us up completely, you know, a new plane, a new level of living. So, I'll ask again, is our conscience a safe guide? You know, it wasn't before you had Jesus, but now it is. Because when you become a Christian, it's, it's like a clock. It, your life has been set in harmony with the Bible. And it has been wound by the Holy Spirit. Now it speaks to us with the ring of truth. For it, it's in tune with Jesus. And that's what we want to be. We want to be in tune with Jesus in our life. That it's the Holy Spirit which is now our conscience. That whatever we think or whatever we do, we think, is, is this what Jesus would do? Is this what I learned in the Bible? You know, we have to show God 
that his ways are now our ways. And, and we can do that by, by staying connected with him moment by moment, you know, day by day, moment by moment. And I'm going to close with this last verse from 1 John. 1 John 1 verse 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Is that what you want? That's what I want. And that's what this world needs. So let's let's put aside our ways and let's reach out for the standards uh, that God has set before us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son who died for us. I thank you for the example that he has set before us uh, to follow the pattern of our life. Lord, I pray that we can put aside the cares of the world and focus more on our walk with you, that we could read our Bible daily, that we can pray more often, and that we can be a light to the world as, as you have brought the light into our life that we can shine uh, to this dying world. So I thank you for your love and mercy and, and be with us as we begin this new week. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, everyone. I pray that you all have a blessed week and we'll see you next time. Bye.